There's been a little confusion in the comments in response to my video about what if you forget that you have a knife on you in a public place? Because of course it is an offence under section 139 of the Criminal Justice Act 1988 to be in possession of a blade or pointed article in a public place without a good reason, lawful authority, or unless it comes within one of those exemptions that I talk about in a few of my other videos. The confusion has come about with section 1 of the Prevention of Crime Act of 1953 which is a very similar provision, but it's slightly different and hence the confusion. So I thought I'd clear that up in this video, rather than debate it in the comments. Section 1 of the Prevention of Crime Act 1953 provides that any person who, without lawful authority or reasonable excuse, which is a term I'll come back to, the proof whereof shall lie with him, has with him in any public place an offensive weapon shall be guilty of an offence. And in this section, offensive weapon means any article made or adapted for the use in causing injury to the person or intended by the person having it with him for such use by him. In other words, it is either something that is made to cause injury, adapted to cause injury, or on the person's possession with the intention of using it to cause injury. For example, if I take a simple remote and I have it with me with the sole intention of causing injury to somebody, and that includes using it for self-defense or something like that. If I have this with me for the purposes of self-defense, that could make this an offensive weapon for the purposes of section one of the Prevention of Crime Act 1953. Similarly, if I took something else, let's say a glass and I broke it, with the intention of causing a jagged edge, which I could then use to cause injury, that is an article adapted for the purposes of causing injury. Or in the case of a weapon of some kind, it is obviously made to cause injury. So all of these things come under section one of the Prevention of Crime Act 1953. So within this part of the act, any person without lawful authority, so let's say a police officer carrying a truncheon, has lawful authority to carry that truncheon with him. Now there is one such case which dealt with this issue of reasonable excuse, and that is Crown and McCullough of 1988. And now the example given in this case is that if someone driving along a road where there'd been an earlier demonstration were to see and pick up a police truncheon, which remember is some kind of offensive weapon, and put it in their car, intending to take it to the nearest police station, then that would be a reasonable excuse if he or she was stopped within the next few minutes for having this truncheon in the vehicle. Had they forgotten about it and two years went by and were then found to have it in the back of the car, that could still amount to a reasonable excuse combined with forgetfulness. So in other words, they've now forgotten that they had this weapon in the vehicle, but originally had a reasonable excuse for having this in their possession in the first place. Now this, I respectfully suggest, is the root of confusion between this and the Criminal Justice Act offence in section 139 of having a blade or other pointed article in a public place without lawful authority or without a good reason, or a specific good reason, to be precise about it. And when talking about this specific good reason and the need to have one, I refer again to Crown and Giles of 2003, in particular paragraph 24, which reads, In our judgment, the subsection is directing attention to the particular time in question when the defendant has the article in his possession. He has, in our view, to have a specific good reason for having it in his possession in a public place at that moment. So in my view, it is not sufficient for a defendant to say that they forgot that they had this knife with them, but previously, a few weeks or months earlier, did have a good specific reason to have it with them then. This court judgment makes it abundantly clear that a defendant must have a specific good reason to have the article in his possession at that specific moment and that specific public place. So whilst there is, I accept, a degree of overlap and similarity between the Criminal Justice Act 1988 section 139 and section one of the Prevention of Crime Act 1953, I suggest that there is a difference in the understanding and the interpretation of what is a specific good reason in the former and a reasonable excuse in the latter. And there is necessarily a difference between the two, because in the example given in the first judgment that I referred to, if I saw a knife out in the street on the floor, let's say a huge machete, 
And I thought to myself, that needs to be handed into the police station because it shouldn't be lying around in the streets. If I picked that up, that is a reasonable excuse. But a reasonable excuse is slightly different from a good reason, although sometimes they might be the same thing. But remember, specifically for section 139, an explanation by itself is not sufficient. It needs to be a good reason. And a good reason at that moment in time, not a good reason that existed some weeks or months before. So I respectfully suggest that anyone that hopes to rely on the defence that they forgot that they had this knife with them for a good reason some weeks ago, is likely to fail in that defence and get convicted. So my suggestion therefore is if you do not have a good reason to have this item with you, then simply don't take it. So I hope that helps to clear up the confusion and thank you for watching.